a, a hell of a guy. He's a, a librettist and a producer, and he has put together uh, with some other folks an opera called The March, a civil rights opera. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Welcome, We're good. Alan. Thank you. Um, the libretta, you're the librettist, but you're also director and producer of The March. Not director. I am not director. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, we made a mistake on our little notes here. I know. That's you when are, I learned the word librettist, when the, I got some I, response and I, said, ah, no, I'm not the I'm not And the here I am the on the other end the of the table, just a little out of, a little behind the times. The March, a yes. civil rights opera. Yes. Where did this come from, the idea and the actual fact of it? Uh, well, the idea was born over a cocktail, actually. Uh, there's a young man who has been singing uh, with Chicago Opera Theater in their Young Artist Program. His name is Martin Woods, and I was out with him and Lee LaBouie. You know, your talking voice sounds like an opera voice uh, already. I, yeah, I don't sing, though, but thank you. I appreciate you don't? that. No, I do not. I do Holy not. smokes. I do uh, I... And I wanted to provide an opportunity uh, and some opportunities for African-American singers like M Martin Woods, um, to have roles that they could really uh, be proud of and sink their teeth into and I promised him uh, that I would write an opera f as a vehicle for him and for other African American opera singers. Very nice. So this guy made an impression on you over those uh, drinks. Quite an, quite <laughs> well, long before those di drinks, but um, uh, I, you know, I was a part of and still am a big supporter of Chicago Opera Theater mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a great company that we're, you know, Everybody can get involved, and in I got to see how operas were put together and, and meet other they, librettists and composers. They may or may not be, but are they, connected, are they connected to the same folks who come here once a month and do opera on tap? They are not. They are not. They, they are not. They are not. But, what a uh, rich, yeah. art, artsy city we live in. It, it, indeed it is. Because uh, you're with one opera group. I, I must confess, another. I've never been to an opera. I've, I'm going to probably go to this opera, uh, but... It, it's, uh, That's what we like to hear. To That's what we like to hear. Have you been to, to an opera? Yes, I have been to an opera. Uh -huh. I had boyfriends who took me to operas. <laughs> Once or twice. I, I was exposed to show tunes early on, but I, I really <laughs> got into R&B and a lot of other music. But... Uh, I, uh, I do watch it on TV once in a while, <laughs> on Channel 11. It's not the same. <laughs> uh, now that you've heard our, our opera history, Alan, <laughs> um, where do you hail from and how did you get involved in the art of opera? Um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, um, and I fell in love with opera in Australia, actually. I knew uh, there'd be a story. <laughs> uh, my wife is Australian, and we were in Australia for seven years. And uh, I had to work at night because my business was, interest was still here. So I had a lot of free time, and it was suggested that I use that free time more constructively. <laughs> <laughs> Could it have been the female in your life who uh, suggested that? It, it, it was. Uh, it was. Women. Are well, so I think that's good. good. We all should use our free time more constructively. Yes, I believe that too. Instead and of watching CSI or whatever would be on late at night. And so opera came very natural to me to like because I love history. Uh, and reading about the composers and the history surrounding the operas, it was like a hand in glove. And then I got back to Chicago and uh, became involved with Chicago Opera Theater. And it was not long before the wheels of my mind began to turn and I felt that there were some stories that were personal to me, that were rich uh, American history, African American history, but American history that um, would suit the operatic form. Because we don't, in, in classical opera, there, there are no American stories, are there? Oh, there are, there, there are. are. And, and that was something that I... Who, uh, who wrote became, American operas? Well, you have, I think one of the, the seminal, most political ones that we've had recently would be, well, for the first one that kind of started this trend would be Nixon in China. Uh, uh, with John Adams, uh, okay. uh, and that's kind of the, you know, the probably the motivation for me is when I saw, you know, something current exactly, being, exactly. being produced yeah. that way. Wow! And so, what out of the incredibly rich history of the civil rights movement? How did you focus on one subject? And and it looks to me like you have created a scene. You you included the Oval Office into into this. So, what have you picked? out of the history to present and to make this production? The march is actually 
the middle opera of a intended three opera trilogy, the King Cycle. You know, there's Wagner and the Ring Cycle, so we're going for the King Cycle. <laughs> And we decided to focus on the march because it was the high point of the movement. So on either side of this, we will be looking at uh, the Rosa Parks story, and then we'd be looking at Memphis, the mountaintop, sort of the, the, last, uh, the last week uh, of King's life. So the march on Washington represents the, the high political and spiritual uh, aspect of the movement. So the march is the first, even though it's going to be the middle, it's the first la, one you've done. A George Lucas, I guess. Well, what, what, uh -huh. uh, what turns you on to, uh, Prequel and sequels. to, the, to the march in general? I, I, uh, you and I were speaking a little bit earlier, and uh, I had the opportunity yesterday to talk to a group of about 300 young people at the Waldorf School uh, as part of a Martin Luther King program. Sure. And I almost forgot, I had to go back in my talk and say, oh, I wanted to say that I was at the March on Washington in 1963. And f for me, to be, to be honest, it, it was the most emotional experience, mm. I think, of my life. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very powerful. It left a great dent in my heart, in my mind, and our you know, impression. And uh, uh, Martin Luther King was uh, my hero then, and he reigns a hero sure. today. Um, mm. Tell me a little bit of how you uh, came to know about the March on Washington and what it meant to you. Um, I would say uh, Taylor Branch's uh, Parting the Waters. Uh, that's uh, the moment the idea popped into my head. I just went to my uh, bookshelf, which is, mm -hmm. I think, somewhat extensive, and pulled his uh, book off. And uh, in fact, just let it open. Yeah. Well, I no, knew no, it. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I knew that's where I wanted to go, but. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I found Taylor Branch on Twitter, and, and uh, the page uh, where I had begun to read about the March on Washington in his book, I began to scribble notes on it, and I was able to tweet that to him uh, to let him know that his book was kind of, you know, the first uh, source for me. Um, but the March on Washington we chose because uh, there is well-known, I have a dream, but there are characters in that uh, uh, story that have not had their stories told very much. Byard Rustin, who was the organizer. Yep. Um, there was a controversy around the John Lewis speech. Right. Uh, yep. There was the pressure on the Kennedy administration because of the civil rights bill that he had just sent up. There was all this drama happening. Most of it behind the scenes. Well, tell but, us about that one little part you mentioned to me about the the government was ready to pull the plug down underneath in a tunnel. That's right. The 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 government, uh, the Kennedy administration, uh, had a man underneath the Lincoln Memorial that if any speech or anything got out of hand, they were ready to literally pull the plug on the PA system. I wonder what their key phrases for out of hand were represented by. <laughs> Um, it, I mean, I really wonder. Well, back in 1963, it would have been anything that would have had to do with black, uh, power. black power or John Lewis had to have his speech toned down because they, it's, they made him take, yeah. tone it way down. I remember being very angry about that, reading about it in the New York Times, I think, and hearing because he was a hero. When, when did the word of that come out, though? A few days beforehand. Oh, it did. It was, it was leaked, uh, yeah, the, the speech was leaked to the press, um, the, his organization thought they would kind of uh, get some advanced publicity, but what happened was it kind of uh, backfired. backfired a bit. Um, so we deal with that prominently uh, in, in the opera. But like, don't get me wrong, this is not a documentary type opera, this right. is about people, this is about their, their hearts and their minds. I haven't cried so much in my life, I, I was in the church uh, office with the secretaries the other day, printing out some scores as we were rehearsing, trying to tell them about the scene between Lyndon Johnson and Senator Russell, where Russell was asking him to support him on the bill, and by the time the printout was finished, uh, we were all three of us were just crying in the office because of what that moment meant in the opera. So it's, it's about people and their hearts and minds. Well, Dr. It, King can make you cry. I, yeah, I mean, it, reading his words, uh, listening to him speak, I, I think of, of all the people who've brought me to tears, he, he's right up there. Yep, I've been with Michael. It just turns on the spigots. Martin Luther King. Well, the most American of movements, the civil rights movement. Sure. Central and, uh, and still going on. How, how do you um, find now living in a place like Chicago with our incredible segregationist history, and current. I mean, if anybody's been watching the conversation about remapping the awards, sure. it's talk about a step backwards. Talk about three giant steps backwards. Well, that's why we think that this opera is uh, an idea whose time has come, because we are able to 
correlate events of today with what was going on then, um, some of the challenges that are being faced um, in, the, in the White House and in the community. Um, so we think it's relevant today, this March on Washington, this opera, with what uh, is going on in the community. Well, let's tell you to people about where the opera is going to take place. Indeed. It's a, it's a free concert, right? It is, it's a free concert previewing two of our scenes, uh, the, Oval, the Oval Office, well, the civil rights leaders getting together to discuss if they're going to have this march and why, and seeing the rivalries and the tension between the different leaders, mm -hmm. and then we have an Oval Office scene. But, but the, the key thing we're doing is also is we're recreating a mass meeting. The first part of the concert will be a 1963 mass meeting where we're going to introduce other characters, future characters in the opera, who we don't have music for it for this concert, but Coretta Scott King, uh, Byard Rustin, Diane Nash, those sorts of characters will be introduced, and everyone at this concert will be part of this mass meeting. Oh, that's very good. And then we go right seamlessly right into the opera. Well, we hope so seamlessly. So the no fourth wall involves the you're, audience. Once, once we kind of start, you're, you're there. You're in it. So the free concert that we're talking about is happening tomorrow, January 15th. Yes. And where at? Tell uh, us. A wonderful, wonderful congregation, North Park Covenant Church, uh, 5250 North Christiana Avenue. And they have been so lovely and wonderful welcoming us. They've given us all access to everything. They've been great. That's, that's right out on the campus what of North time? Park College, right? North Park University. That's correct. It's at Foster and Christiana there at 6 p.m. tomorrow. 6 p.m. And come early. We've already had uh, almost 400 RSVPs. It's a free concert, but you need to send us a message at RSVP at civilrightsopera.com to make sure you can get in. Otherwise, it'll be like one of those mass meetings where there'll be a speaker outside or down in the basement, and uh, you won't be able to really see what's going on. Which a few of those meetings That's right. were like. That's right. Alan, well, there's a couple other people involved with this. Uh, yes. Jonathan Simpson. Uh, tell us about the folks that you've, you've pulled together and are putting this on. And then <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the, where the project goes. Because sure. it's going to be a full-fledged sure, opera, right. one of three parts. And <clears throat> where are you at on the whole project? Well, first of all, I, I just want to say that uh, Jonathan Stinson uh, is a talented, talented young composer. Um, he is in Cincinnati at uh, the Cincinnati Conservatory. And he is not only a great composer, but he's a wonderful friend. And he just gets this music, gets what we need to do with this music. He and I are able to work together uh, hand in glove. And we have a wonderful director, Amy Hutchison, who kind of... Uh, She's everything. She, I, I sent her a message last night when we got home from rehearsal. You know, she's the first one, first one in and last one out. I mean, she's been absolutely fantastic. So the three of us together, um, we're we're a pretty good, pretty good team. And we're looking after this concert. We want to uh, put a package together um, and get a commission uh, uh, at uh, a co-production at opera companies around the, around the country. So we'll be uh, consulting you know, with the appropriate people to see what's the best way to approach that. But we hope to have this in the 2013-2014 opera season because that'd be the 50th anniversary of the March in Washington. Right. And we've already got a year under our belt. I mean, we are way ahead of the, of the uh, curve on this. We're ready to go. Are you doing this full time or you have a